Placenta previa is the topic for this presentation and the best way to uh, talk about placenta previa is by showing a diagram. So here we have a diagram. Um, this is the normal placenta um, uh, illustration where as you can see this red uh, a little squiggly line coming out of the baby's uh, umbilicus is the placenta and it normally sits right here uh, far away from this area which is the cervical os, OS. Uh, it's the opening of the cervix. Now a placenta previa is described in this diagram a complete placenta previa which is where as you can clearly see the placenta is now covering uh, the entire uh, cervical uh, opening uh, or cervical os. There's another type of placenta previa called marginal placenta previa which uh, is illustrated here which as you can clearly see uh, only covers a part of the cervical os so that's why it's called marginal. So that's placenta previa. It's an abnormal uh, uh, location of the placenta. So why uh, why would a woman uh, develop this? So what are some of the risk factors for placenta previa? Well, these risk factors are very important to remember. Uh, they're not just uh, something, you know, just to dismiss. So remember these. Uh, one of them is multiparity, a woman that's had, um, uh, you know, several pregnancies. A prior cesarean. If she's had a prior cesarean delivery, it increases her risk of having a placenta previa in a subsequent pregnancy. Uh, uterine abnormalities, uh, a uh, uterine fibroid, fibroids for example, that can uh, be a risk factor. Uh, smoking, interestingly, is a risk factor for developing placenta previa. A multifetal pregnancy, and what that means is uh, uh, a pregnancy that is uh, more than one fetus, so you know, twins, triplets, and advanced maternal age um, is another risk factor. So remember these. These are important risk factors for developing placenta previa and they will be tested on the licensing exam. So don't, uh, don't just ignore that. So why is placenta previa even an issue? Why can't you just uh, continue the pregnancy um, you know, like you would normally? Why does it uh, uh, present a problem? Well, it's because placenta previa can cause some significant complications and I will list them. Well, the first uh, complication is something called placenta accreta. And uh, what is placenta accreta? Well, to illustrate that, again, we go back to our diagram here, and in particular, this diagram on this side. This is placenta accreta. Now, what's going on here? We talked about placenta uh, previa, which was illustrated in these uh, nice diagrams here, but what's placenta accreta? Well, placenta accreta is when the placenta has actually attached itself uh, to the myometrium. And the myometrium is, of course, the, uh, the muscle of the uterus, myometrium. All right. And this diagram illustrates that down here. Now, I would like to also mention two other times of placenta uh, placement or abnormal placement and that is placenta increta which is when the placenta actually invades into the myometrium and this diagram uh, uh, illustrates that and then finally the the most significant one is uh, actually placenta percreta which is a situation in which the placenta actually perforates through the myometrium perforates through the myometrium. Now, placenta previa can become uh, complicated by eventually uh, progressing to placenta accreta. So remember that. That's actually very important. So that's a complication that is uh, significant. Now, what's another complication uh, if you want to continue this list here? Another complication of uh, placenta previa is preterm delivery. And we'll talk a little bit more about that because sometimes you have to actually have to deliver the fetus uh, if this placenta previa uh, is occurring in the pregnancy. Premature rupture of membranes, intrauterine growth retardation, 
and congenital anomalies. These are all complications of placenta previa. So remember these. These are important. And it actually illustrates the significance of this uh, uh, abnormal uh, presentation of the placenta. All right, so now that we talked a little bit about the background, let's talk about, let's get into now the symptoms. So how does a woman present? How does a woman present uh, with this uh, placenta previa? Well, it's uh, almost always after 20 weeks of gestation, and the average is about 29 to 32 weeks. Okay, and the presentation is sudden, painless, vaginal bleeding. What's really significant about this is that it will be bright red and it may even be so heavy that it can lead to hemorrhagic shock so it's pretty significant and also sometimes in conjunction with the uh, bleeding is uterine contractions which may accompany the bleeding so that's how you, the woman would present well how do you diagnose it if a woman does present with those types of symptoms, let's say at around 30 weeks of gestation, how would you diagnose it? Do you do a vaginal exam? No, do not do a vaginal exam. That is contraindicated. Because if you do a vaginal exam and she indeed does have a placenta previa, you can make things a lot worse. It can cause sudden massive bleeding. It's a disaster. So remember that. This is contraindicated. Do not do a vaginal exam. So the way you do diagnose it is a ultrasound. And now the ultrasound can be a transvaginal ultrasound or a transabdominal ultrasound. But the ultrasound is the way to diagnose this. Other things that you will do in the uh, manage workup of uh, placenta previa is you've got to get a fetal heart rate monitor going to monitor the fetus. And then if uh, you feel that um, there's an issue here that, uh, that is so serious that you may need to actually deliver the fetus, you want to assess the fetal lung maturity. And that is done by testing the amniotic fluid uh, to assess uh, fetal lung maturity. Because remember, the fetus's lungs, if the fetus is uh, premature, uh, the fetus's lungs may not be appropriate to survive outside of the amniotic uh, sac. So this has to be assessed. So you've diagnosed it, now how do you treat it? What do you do? Well there's really two categories of, of management for placenta previa. There's the first category which is uh, a woman that's ready to deliver and the second category which is not ready. Not ready to deliver. Okay. Now let's talk about this one first. If a woman is not ready to deliver, why would she not be ready to deliver? Well, the biggest reason is because the fetus is too premature. You know, we're, we're, we're not even close to being ready to deliver. So what you do is you first stabilize the patient and the fetus, um, and um, you give a tocolytic. And tocolytic, uh, by definition, is something a medication that you give that suppresses premature labor. It buys time. It allows you to uh, um, uh, buy a few more days or, you know, it gives you more time before the, the fetus is delivered. And one of the most common tocolytics is magnesium sulfate. Now, why would you need to buy time? You know, if you buy two days, let's say you prolong the pregnancy by two days, how is that beneficial? Well, what that allows you to do is give corticosteroids. Now, if you remember, corticosteroids are something you give to help the fetus's lungs mature. Remember, very important. Okay? So, uh, you've got a situation where she, a woman has placenta previa. She's not ready to deliver. You give a co tocolytic. You give corticosteroids like betamethasone, and that allows the fetus's lungs to mature um, and get the uh, fetus ready for delivery okay now let's say they are you are ready for delivery well the delivery is almost always done by cesarean what you're looking at is 36 weeks you hope to get 36 weeks and you also you need fetal lung maturity that's very important and you also 
need to make sure that uh, there is an actual need to deliver because you don't want to deliver too early but reasons to deliver would include uh, fetal distress you, you, where you just have to get the fetus out of there uh, so there's two categories there of management and one last thing I'd like to mention uh, before I show you a vignette is uh, that because uh, women can lose a lot of blood because of placenta previa they can go into shock and if the woman is RH negative you give, and this is important for licensing exams, you give that famous RH immune globulin. And that's really important if the, pers if the woman has RH negative blood. Finish up the presentation with a clinical vignette, and uh, here we go. 37-year-old woman Gravita 3 Para 2 at 32 weeks gestation comes to the physician because of bleeding from her vagina. She states that this morning she passed two quarter-sized clots of blood from her vagina. Otherwise, she states that she is feeling well. The baby has been moving normally and she has had no contractions or gush of fluid from the vagina. Her obstetrical history is significant to, for two low transverse cesarean deliveries for non-reassuring fetal heart rate tracings. An ultrasound is performed that demonstrates a complete placenta previa. Show you the diagram again. For which of the following conditions is this patient at highest risk? So what they're asking is when you have this type of a situation, what type of complication can this lead to? This is the most important part of the uh, uh, vignette. In the past, she's had two cesareans. Now remember, cesareans, if you remember earlier in the presentations, are a risk factor. Now, if a woman has had no prior cesareans, she has about a 5% uh, uh, risk of developing percent, uh, placenta previa. Um, um, now, placenta previa, do you remember what it complicates to? There was a list and one of those things is right here placenta accreta placenta accreta is a complication of the placenta previa and that's choice C none of these other things were a complication now I want to uh, illustrate that if uh, a woman has had placenta previa and no prior cesareans she has about a 5% risk of developing placenta accreta okay remember that no prior cesareans. Now if a woman has had one prior cesarean, okay, and she has a placenta previa, she has about a 25 percent risk of developing placenta accreta. And finally, if a woman has a placenta previa and she's had two or more prior cesarean deliveries as in as in this clinical vignette her risk of developing a placenta accreta jumps to 50 percent so remember in this case she has a placenta previa she has had a history of two cesareans so she actually has a 50 percent chance of developing a placenta accreta so this question is asking which of the following conditions is she at highest risk of developing and the answer is placenta accreta which by definition is when the placenta is attached to the myometrium